What is up, everybody? Random Random Man here, aka RRM, bringing you another rapid movie review, aka RMR, and it is for Godzilla Minus One. Now, the plot of this kaiju film takes place in post-war Japan with its people dealing with the emergence of the titular character. And in speaking of its people, a commonality between other kaiju and monster movies is that the human element is an afterthought compared to the inevitable destruction done by the creatures. That is not the case here with our lead, Koichi, played by Ryonusuke Kamiki. He is a former kamikaze pilot who abandons his duties towards the end of the war and feels a great amount of grief and remorse over what he didn't do both during the war and in an early action sequence, and he carries that with him across the narrative. There are similar attributes that apply with Minami Hamabe as Noriko, a woman who randomly shows up in Koichi's life while she is carrying a child that is not hers. And the three of them together become an unlikely found family. And I came to really care for what happens to them as Godzilla is stomping around Japan. I also have to give a shout out to Hidetaka Yoshiwaka as Noda, a former naval weapons engineer who helps head up a plan to take down the kaiju. All of the performances here really are stand out because of how much they add to how this movie has a human heart. And with how it is all written together, this movie is celebrating the 70th anniversary of the monster and franchise as a whole. Personally, I'm speaking as someone who enjoys a good monster movie every now and then, but I wouldn't say that I'm a full-on fan of the genre. However, here, the writing and directing by Takashi Yamazaki brings out a balance not just with the aforementioned human drama, but also all of the kinetic kaiju chaos that ensues with the moving metaphors with how he does put everything into focus here. The way the monster does emerge and makes his presence known is legit scary. Fans who want to see their favorite monster wreck shop will get their fair share of it here. And visually, the effects have to be given a shout out to as well because Yamazaki also worked on them and apparently the budget was made for about the equivalent of 15 million US dollars, which is insane to think because compared to almost every Hollywood production here, all of the big tentpole movies that have been released in 2023, this holds up towards a lot of them in being made for exponentially less. Now, naturally, not everything is going to look flawless with that budget, but when you take a look at what is most important with the monster being front and center, it's effective. Another technical element I gotta praise is the music by Naoki Sato, which adds on to the intensity watching this monster go ham on everything in its way. The iconic theme from the original Godzilla film is prevalent throughout too, so fans will get a kick out of that. And with it all running together, it's pacing, editing, all of it combining to a running time of just over two hours in length, really went by in a snap. All in all, I really enjoyed Godzilla Minus One. Between this and the film I previously saw and reviewed yesterday, The Boy and the Heron, Japan is having a moment breaking out internationally with its films. I hope to see that continue even outside of Miyazaki and Gojira in seeing these movies in the theater where they're meant to be seen. I will even go as far as to say that I enjoyed Godzilla Minus One more than any of Legendary's Monsterverse movies too because of how much substance is here, not just for a monster movie, but for a movie in general that is a strong one I definitely recommend seeing. With that, my final verdict for Godzilla Minus One is four out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Godzilla Minus One, social media links in the description, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.